I will make water transport effective, says the SDP governorship candidate Kunle Uthman. Tonight, we discuss the Lagos governorship race and the SDP's plans for 2023. I have done well, says Buhari. And this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. Fifteen of the 18 political parties will be fielding candidates for, the, for next year's governorship elections in Lagos State. The parties, according to a list published by the Independent National Electoral Commission, are the All Progressive Congress, APC, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the Accord Party, the African Action Congress, the African Democratic Congress, amongst others. Now, the Social Democratic Party Lagos governorship candidate, Mr. Kunle Usman, has promised to make water transportation effective if voted into office in 2023. Usman, who also lamented the filth and dirt in the state, promised to create mass jobs for use by engaging them in cleaning Lagos. Well, joining us live in the studio this evening is uh, the SDP governorship candidate for Lagos State, Chief Kunle Usman. It's good to have you join us in the Hello. studio. Good evening. Nice to be here. Great. Um, so, uh, a lot of promises being made. This is nothing new to the political scene. Promises are always made if you finally get into office. But let me start from the basics. Why do you want to be the Lagos State Governor? Well, good evening. I'm an indigenous of Lagos State. My father is from here. My mother is from here. I did my primary education at the Riti Primary School in Nikori, from where I proceeded to the prestigious Methodist Boys High School. So I spent the better part of my life in Lagos, so I can feel the pulse of the city. And not just the city itself. I was in Badagri, I was in Ekpe Ikurudu at several times when I grew up. So I have a good understanding of what this state involves. Mm. And uh, can rem I remember as a young man, Lagos as it was then and what it has become now. And I believe that we have to do a lot of cleaning up there has been a vast degeneration of a well-planned city with infrastructural facilities, with good roads, pipe bone water, to a dirty city, a toxic city, an insecure city, where we can no longer move without fearing. So I believe that me, I am one of the best suited persons to clean the state up because I have experience. And I was in government when I was 35 as personal assistant to the Minister of Transport and Aviation under the ING. From there, I proceeded to become the personal assistant to the Minister of Power and Steel. So I understand Nepal and its problems. And during the period of Babatunde Raji Fashala as governor of Lagos State, I also served as a commissioner in the Lagos State Judicial Service Commission. Mm -hmm. And also, more importantly, I was part of a team of people that were brought together to look at the state and put up a mega city formula for the state. And all the indices of mega city, I understand it. I understand policy control. I understand that at 12 years ago, some of us, we sat down and we looked at Lagos from the perspective of Lagos as it should be, and we drafted all the policy control, building control for the state to ensure that buildings will never, ever fall. But it was it's quite traumatizing and um, befuddling that 12 years after these policies were put in place, we have been having collapsed building every time, everywhere, especially during the tenure of this governor. We sat down one day, 21-story building came crashing down. 21 stories, my dear. Not two, not four, 21. It came down, and there was loss of lives. We sat down one day again. Butimeta had his own problem. Mengi had his own problem. Last week, seven-story building came crashing down in Europe. This is not the Lagos of our dreams. We want a place that will be secured for our people, for people who also come from other parts of the country to do business here, to live here. 
We want them to feel secure because Lagos is a cosmopolitan place and it is the commercial nerve center of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. More importantly, we want it to be such a place that people come in, foreigners come in from all over the world to enjoy the aquatic splendor of what Lagos State should be. And we believe that this government, this particular one, has filled the people. Every morning, you hear people from Abramade Center to Ekwe for hours. From everywhere in Lagos, there is traffic gridlock. I experienced it myself. I went to Ekwe, and between Ekwe and Lagos, lucky where I live, it took me six hours. So you have a city that is not planned. There is planlessness. It's not only the island. You go to Korodu, it's the same story. You go to Badagri, it's the same story. You go to Ekpe, you go everywhere. It is a disjointed city where there is sporadic development without a proper articulated plan for the city. And I believe that it can no longer be business as usual. That this particular APC government in Lagos State has failed us. Mm -hmm. It is a true. It's been coming from Bola Ahmed Chinubu, came to Fashola. After that was Hambody, and then the portrait is the present governor. I believe that he should live and let, let us have a better city for posterity and for a better environment. There is no health care facility in the state. We have water everywhere. We don't have ferries on the road. When I liked that Chief Jack Monday was in government, as civilian governor in this state, there was ferry on the road, Babaki Kere, Itafaji, that used to commit between CNS, Okokomaiku, and other places. There is this development going on at the Dangote refinery and other developments in Lekki Free Trade Zone. When they start operations, we don't know how we are going to move in that axis. There ought to be a coastal road. We have heard about four Fort Mainland Bridge promises nothing is happening. If you want to go into a papa, it takes you forever to go in and to come out. So there, there is no vehicular movement. And I believe that we can develop the water transportation. The state is dirty, the state is toxic, and there's abandoned projects everywhere. San Gross Market was brought down by government a few years ago. Nothing is going on there, nothing, no development. They just dug the place and all the market women are there on the streets. You go from Lagos, go from Tinubu, go towards Martin Street, go down, go to Dusemo, turn into Jankara, smelly, Toxic traffic gridlock everywhere. A part of it completely abandoned. The market has not been built. And when I was a child, I used to go there. So you see, you have Lagos of, um, it's not a planned city. And if we want to attain the mega city of our dream, it has to be planned. There has to be good transportation. There has to be good health facilities. There has to be good roads. There has to be, everything has to be in order. We we'll go everywhere in the world. And what we see in Lagos, you can do far, far, far better. I commend him on this Okada issue when he decided to rationalize Okada people and ban them from certain areas because they had become a societal nuisance. But that is not enough. It's more than just throwing people into employment. We have to create jobs. We have to remove agbo roads from the road, from the parks. We have to ensure that we can move. In those days, you can move from any part of Lagos at any time of the night. Go to the nightclub at 12 o'clock, midnight, 1 o'clock. You are moving from one place to the other. So there's an urgent imperative need that we are going to do this. And the SDP government has a manifesto, which we believe is going to be a contract with the people. It is a development from the presidential manifesto of the party itself. You know, we have a president, Prince Adewale. We have a manifesto at the center. We also have a modified one for the state. And we are going to ensure that this manifesto is a contract between us and the people. We is not going to be, we will do security, Later, security get worse. We are going to improve the value of the currency. All these promises, as we not be a government of promises, we are going to do it, and we are going to put a timeline. Okay. I, I see that you have named almost all of the problems that Lagosians are facing. I like it. I like that you've seen all the problem spots. But let's talk about the realities on the ground. Yes. Um, how to go about these things. Let's start with the most teething of problems, which is the roads, the infrastructure. Uh, you get close to VGC, you see how bad that spot is. They're trying to fix the road we hear, but then it's causing a whole lot of traffic. And then the rains are here, and every single place is flooded. Um, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it came, it was raining for hours, and both sides of the Lekekwe Expressway 
was flooded. Um, so my question is, what would you do about this? Because again, we see parts of Lagos, beautiful erected buildings, but then there are no drainage systems. But there are building plans for these, you know, facilities. I mean, sometimes malls, and then the roads, the sides of the road that leads to the mall has no drainage system. And the ones who have drainage systems, those drainages have been blocked. Can we really blame government on its own? How about the people who live in Lagos, and what are you going to do about it? Government will be held core people and responsible. Because you see, the whole concept of a city, even an estate, is to be planned, and you don't distort the master plan. You ought to know that this particular area will have X number of roads. You're putting all the necessary facilities. What has happened in that area is complete distortion. Some of those areas were agricultural areas mm -hmm. marked for development that have been converted to estates. So that conversion itself, you have to hold government responsible. As to the issue of approved plans, we have begun to realize in this state that there are many buildings that are springing up everywhere, and there are no plans. The seven-story building that came down, we know for a fact now from got information coming out that there was no pl approved plan for this building. And the interesting aspect of it was a stop order was placed on that building three times for them to stop work. They never did. They continued until the building came down. The material information is this. And I am asking the Lagos State Governor to kindly oblige us the information. Who is this man that owns that building, that seven-story building? Because it's not enough for the commissioner to say, I resign. It's, we need to know. We need to find out the people that were negligent. Lagos State government is with, with their withholding this information. And believe me sincerely, it is very irresponsible for them to do so. We need to know. Even if the governor was the owner of that building, he needs to disclose I'm the owner. So we can deal with him in the appropriate way. Transportation. Transportation is not road. It's a holistic statement that involves all, for all sorts of modular movements. Now, you have road transportation. You have rail transportation. You have water transportation. The majority of the people on the road ought not to be on the road. They pay access. You have water there both ways. So you can develop the waterways in such that you have ferries move people from point A to point B. They can move them from a point in Ekwe and drop them at CMS at the, at the right time. So it's going to be development of the waterways. We can no longer sit there and assume that all of us must be at the road at the same time. Also, you remember there was a time in Lagos that they had a park and ride system. The park and ride system involved that you park your car in a certain place. You board a bus, you get into the city. When you close, when you close for the day, you enter this another bus that brings you back to your car and you drive away. We need to reappraise that. And are we monitoring our roads well? For me, we are not. And we are not developing other modes of transportation. Look at the monorail. If you go to CMS, they have been disturbing traffic now for the last two years. Babatuni Fashola, His Excellency started the rail system. His Excellency Akimian Bode continued. His Excellency uh, Babajide Sonwoluk has not finished it. It's a monorail. In other parts of the world, it's more than a monorail. What you have is a multi rail system, such that rail is moving from A to B, B to C, all at the same time. We travel abroad, we see all these things. So we cannot continue to talk about road transportation. And one of the problems with our roads is the fact that there is no proper supervision. We have a LASMA that is highly indisciplined. When LASMA was brought into the system, they were a disciplined court that were able to marshal and monitor traffic. Last me I mean monitoring traffic. But what they do now is not to monitor traffic. They do every other thing that is not their business. So what we now need to do is to reform LASMA. It has to be reformed. We have to train them better. And we have to bring in more people into LASMA. Because there are certain areas, the VGC area, you go to Ikota, you go to Agrik in Ikorodu, you go to Okokomaiko. They, they are, you have human movements 24, 21 hours of the day. Now, in such places, you need a shift system, a three shift system. Some people resume at 8, they close at 4. 4, they close at 12. 12, they close at 8. So that you have traffic monitoring agencies in those places 
at every time of the day, and you pay them well. Because what you're having is a LASMA that is not, they don't have the incentive to work. LASMA, has, they, they can stop you, check your papers, they ask you to open your bonnet, they do all sorts of things. So we will fear LASMA now more than we fear the police. So the LASMA that we have now is an aberration. So we cannot just sit down and say road, road, road. If we have traffic managers on the road, that are ensuring that traffic is moving. Even in the back spots, the ensures, traffic will who, move. Who supervises um, LASMA? Because we could reform. I mean, with due LASMA respect, is an the police has been reformed and over reformed and reformed and reformed again, but we still have the same output. So if there is not a monitoring system that checks to make sure that people are doing their jobs, what's the essence of this reformation? The police is a the Nigerian police, it's well, a big, humongous organization. Look, either or not, we deserve a state police. It's a different matter. But for now, it's Nigerian police. LASMA is Lagos State Traffic Management Authority. Lagos State. So it's not our business to go and monitor traffic in Ogun, in Oyo, or in Plateau, or in Jigawa. It's, it, we have a geographical zone where we cover. What we need to do, we have to bring in more people into LASMA. We have to employ more people. What, well, what, what, what bringing more people into the last month, I don't know how that solves the problem. The people you already have clearly stated that they're underpaid. And so bringing in more people means that the wage bill goes up. Already, have they been able to pay them well? Because remuneration is also somewhat of an encouragement here. You have to your job. mind to wage. The first problem is not wage. The first problem is this is a very large state. It's not a small state. Absolutely. We're, we're not talking of last month for VGC or taking a last month for Lekki, we're looking at the state from a holistic perspective. There is problem everywhere. We need to have a system that caters for the entire state. We need to have a last month that can align with the local governments. We need supervisory agencies from all this level. In terms of number, we don't have enough. Coupled with the indiscipline of Lagos traffic, Lagos drivers. You find them, they just face traffic, and there's great luck. If you go to the Ecobridge, you know there was fire recently. Therefore, they are repairing a part of the bridge. On that part that is not repaired, you find downfall, you find Okada riders facing traffic. And it makes movement in that area completely uh, unmotorable. So you need some people there to ensure that such things don't happen. Incentive to last month, for, for, for crying out loud, Working in the sun is not the easiest job to do. If they put you an eye in the sun, we're not going to be that comfortable. But we have an agency that is for traffic. We need to develop the water. We need to develop the railway. We need to create alternative road transportation. So that, and you don't even need to come into the city every day. You see one car, one man is driving four vacancies. You see another one, two people, three vacancies. So there is underutilization of those vehicles. So that's why I suggest that we go back. We go back to the drawing board and consider the issue of monitoring traffic and the park and ride system. And one of the problems, again, on our roads is the street traders. You have, you have street traders, you have watchings on the road, you have women who are carrying children to beg for money, you have people selling gala, they are selling all sorts of things. So you need a system whereby you get them off the road. The problem in Tinubu and other areas, even in Agbara, down to Badagri, is the number of people that are trading on the road. You, the road is not a place for you to trade. So you need to create an avenue for them to trade elsewhere. It is not unlikely that you can have what they call a Sunday market. If you want a Sunday market in Lagos Island, for example, you close down about Macaulay, you close it down to Idumota. So that on Sunday, there is Liverpool trading Sunday market in England. In London, you go there to shop. People go there every Sunday, you meet yourself. So we can introduce that in different parts of the state. But on a Monday to Saturday basis, when we are going to work and we need to move properly and within time, we cannot allow street urchins, we cannot allow women carrying children beg on the road, we cannot find people who are selling, they sell chicken, they sell pepper, they sell tomato, you can almost buy everything that you want on the road on your way home. It is not normal. You don't see that in any other society. So let's there's need for information. Let's talk about taxation in Lagos. That's another heavy problem for people. Um, all kinds of people are coming for taxes. You know, sometimes you pay two, two times for the same thing. And you can't even sometimes um, tell the difference between a, a, a government official as opposed to these others who 
pose as, and they have all kinds of names for these taxes. Um, what would the SDP government do to change that situation or monitor it and make sure that people um, are not necessarily ripped off of their hard-earned money? Taxation in Lagos is, a, is, a, is, an, is abnormal. It seems like they have a, pack, a set of people who sit down in a corner and on their bad day, they will introduce one form of tax. It's a, a state of multiple taxation, and that is not the way it should be. But we also know that in our eternally generated revenue in the state, there's a company that is collecting the money that collects a percentage. There is no reason why an alphabet should collect a dime in our state. We have a legal state internally generated revenue service. It is the duty of that organization to collect tax and to keep the money in the state. We don't have an obligation to pay to Why anybody. Why do you think the Lagos State Government introduced Alpha Better into the system? Well, there was a time when the allocation of Lagos State was withheld by the federal government. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that happened was they felt that they could not create LCDAs standing side by side with local government that the Constitution of Nigeria did not recognize the CDA. So the money was withheld. And at that time, and we must praise the ingenuity of the government at that time, what they tried to do was to ensure that they widened their tax nets in such a way to collect as much as is humanly possible. And it was the wisdom of the people then to, collect, to bring in this tax agency. But the, the, we have left that situation. The money was released to government. Allocation has been paid as and when necessary to the Lagos state government. So that organization has been completely irrelevant in the system. So we don't need to pay them anything. We have the manpower for that. So, we remember so the if you were governor, you would make sure that the government cuts ties with Alphabet? No, I will, I will rescind the contract they won. They won. If they like, they take me to God to go and test the veracity of that decision in court. I will rescind it on day one by an executive order. And number two, if you remember, there was a time they told this Lekki Ekpe Express Road, if you remember very well. We used to pay to the Lekki Ekpe Express Road and then the Osborne Ikoyi Road. And there, so, was this, uh, uh, there was this, this, there was this NSAS problem. Mm -hmm. And after the NSAS, there were issues about collecting at both points. And it was the contention of people like us who knew that it was, it was like an abnormal tax. If we have to apply a road just to move from Osborne to Lekki, it's a very short road, a short bridge. And we have to pay. At that time, 400 naira. Per trip, if I pass that place three times a day, I pay 400, 400, 400, 400. It was not a daily pass. And it was, it was, it perpetrated action on people who lived in that access. And that access is not just a, but it is a, it's not a Lekki. It's Lekki, VGC, Abramadation are down to Ekwe. And government was gracious enough to listen to the protestation of the people. And the money was not, was not introduced. We commend them. But you see, they brought again another one recently. They say it's parking, parking tax or parking charge. We can't, we can't continue like this. Because we are in a time in this country whereby people are, people are, they are starving. People are hungry. There's no money. This will is eight hundred naira per litre. You can't buy kerosene. You can't eat bread. Then they say you should come and pay for things. We have to be reasonable in the way we traumatize the people. Mm. We have to find a way of generating money for the state. It cannot be tax, 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 tax. It must stop. Okay. So for me, as a for our own governments, one of the things we will do is to look holistically at the tax regime of government okay. and to see the possibility of abandoning most of this. All right, finally, let's talk party politics. The SDP is not as um, f you know, popular in Lagos as opposed to the PDP, who's the main opposition, and of course, the, uh, the ruling All Progressive Congress. Um, what makes you think that you stand a chance? You see, this question of popularity, I agree with you, but there is no statistical basis for it. But what, I, what I'll tell you now is this. I don't believe that the man who spends 12 hours on the road every day or who spends nine hours on the road is going to think about that when he's going to cast his vote. He will likely think about the most efficacious person who can come into government and make a change. 
But because that, but that person is being brought to the fore by a political party, like it or not. I mean, I tell you, you have not allowed me to finish. You have not allowed me to finish. The political party is an instrument for electioneering. Do you agree with me? It's an instrument. I want to contest. I cannot contest as myself because the law does not permit me to do so. So I will go to a party and I'm contesting for SDP. Remember, SDP was MK Abiola's party. It's not unknown. It was a party between uh, that Abiola and Baba Ghana Kingibe used as the vehicle for their campaign and the election. Yes, we are the people that still experience that night, that time. We are not dead. And you remember also that there were people who could not vote in last election. People who are 14, 14 then, now they are 18. People who are 15, now they are 19. They are going to vote. And you can see what the ANS has taught us, that we can no longer neglect the youths of this country. We need to understand that they are not going to vote from the perspective of Baba Sope, Abi Emilio Kong. No! They are going to vote from the perspective of what they can see on the floor as people who can save them and their, desti and their destiny. Okay. The dollar today is 700 naira to one dollar. Today, 700 naira to a dollar. There was a time in this country the dollar was 80 naira, 80, 80, uh, I mean, uh, 80 kobo. One naira for one dollar in this Nigeria in our generation. But now, imagine people who engage in all forms of foreign exchange. Cost of tickets, going from Lagos to Abuja now is about 85 to 100,000. How much do you pay to travel? Are we going to stop all this because we cannot manage our system? Anything that is dollar-based, bread is 1,100. Kerosene, diesel, where are the refineries? And you are telling me party. This is no longer party. This is going to be the practicality of people who can save us and save our children and save our destiny and restore the dignity of our country in the community of nations, my okay. dear. All it right. cannot be party. Okay. We're going to look at people, and I can tell you, as you go on, you will monitor. We are going to campaign from the nooks and all the nooks and crannies of the state. Okay. We are going to carry the message of all 2023. All right. Well, um, I wish you all the best Thank in you your very campaigns. Much. Well, Chief Kunle Usman is the SDP governorship candidate for Lagos State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate your coming. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for right. availing me the opportunity to all send right. the message of hope to Nigerians everywhere. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the assessment of the Buhari-led administration as the president himself gave himself a pat on the back. We'll be right back.